I'm Shane of Shane Milton Photography. Here in this video, we're going to do the continuing of the intro to raw therapy. So we'll turn to the computer here. We're going to edit actually a boudoir photo, but I want to show you how you import your images. So here I'm actually on Linux with the KDE Plasma desktop. Something you need to do even under Windows is you will see your different drives here. So I've got different drives on this computer and you'll just select the drive you want. Let me move this out some here. So I'm actually going to go to Shane because I'm on Linux. I want to be in my home folder. It's kind of like uh, the my documents folder under Windows. Uh, so I'm in here. I'm going to go into my downloads folder. I have these. These are all five star rated and I've clicked the five star up here in the top just so I can see only the photos I want. And then just double click the image. This is the image straight out of camera. Uh, it already looks very good because the exposure is very good. Now this is the standard Raw Therapy 5.8. So I don't have the vector scope here for judging the exposure for overexposure and underexposure. So over here, you have these exclamation point triangles here. You know, I'll click the overexposure. You can see in black here what is overexposed or is losing detail. And then you have your underexposure, which is just a little bit here in the hair. But one thing I do like to do is this version of raw therapy and raw therapy going forward. There is a feature in raw therapy 5.8 that is not in the fork of raw therapy called art. When you go into the raw tab, you have capture sharpening. This is an automatic setting. It'll actually auto set the sliders. And what this is doing is immediately after the demosaicing, it is applying capture sharpening. And it's not really going to come through on YouTube, but on a large 27 inch 4K display, it is producing a very sharp image. Something this does is when you have diffraction from lenses, it actually is helping get rid of that. So if you're doing like a uh, food photography, this is something I definitely recommend. Um, and it's not over sharpening. Like when you go into your sharpening stuff and sharpen it yourself where you can over sharpen it, it's just sharpening it immediately after demosaic. That way, then when you're processing your image, you have a good image. So something I want to do with this image is I'm thinking I want to lower the contrast a little, but here I want to under highlight reconstruction, I want to go to color propagation. Now I will do other videos on the other highlight recovery ones. You can do luminance recovery, but visually you're not going to see a difference initially because it just isn't really doing much yet. But here on this image, you know, the sheet here looks good, but I'm going to go down here to my shadows and highlights and I'm going to enable this. And I want to recover the highlights on the bed some. Now, obviously you're not going to be able to recover everything. Depending on the file, you will have to drop sometimes your overall exposure. Now I just switched the color space to lab for the recovery. That does help a little bit, but if we set it to RGB, you know, it looks good. You go to lab, it also looks good. It actually removed some of the blue hue. That was over here on the uh, white sheets, so I'm going to leave it on lab. But now, well here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here under this initial tone curve, and I'm going to start a new tone curve, 
and I want to actually just set it to a standard tone curve. And I want to just bring the shadow side up just slightly. You know, I'm using these lines as a guide here, but then I'm going to bring in some contrast, but the image is going to have kind of a faded kind of look here in the shadows here. And I might go ahead and bring up the contrast, the highlights, very, very, very little. Now, visually, this image for the white balance looks good to me. Obviously, if you're using art or the development version of raw therapy, you can hover over the skin tones and get the vector scope. But something I think I want to do with this image here, I'm actually going to go into the vibrance and I'm actually just going to bring this down slightly just to lower the vibrance of the image slightly. You can select protect skin tones and it will bring your skin tones back up. You know, it does sometimes look kind of weird, but I'm just going to let it protect the skin tones. And I'm going to just bring the vibrancy down just a little bit. And I do want to warm the image up just a small amount. Now, what I'm also going to do, I'm actually going to zoom in here. There's not a lot of noise, but I do like to enable noise reduction. Now, I do want to also go into sharpening, turn that on, just look at it with the default. It does look good. I'm going to leave it at its default. Now, the other thing you can do, now if you're under Linux, this works perfectly fine. You can select this uh, tool here that looks like a painter's tablet with a brush and you can send it directly to GIMP and edit from there. But in here, if you want to export your image from Raw Therapy, I've gotten this question quite a bit. You want to select this image. What I usually do is I put it in Q and then select the Q and you have the image there. You can select your file format. If I'm going to do editing inside of GIMP, I'll usually select 16-bit float. But if you're just in a hurry and you want to get it sent out, you know, maybe you're not going to retouch it. You can select JPEG 8-bit, select your JPEG quality. I usually try to not go below 95% if I'm going to be retouching the image. So, and I usually... It'll use a template. It'll create a folder inside the same folder called converted if you use the template. I usually use save to folder inside of raw therapy and art so I can specify an edit folder separate from the raw files. But for this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go back into the image. I'm going to select the artist tab there. I'm going to let it open GIMP. I'm going to go ahead and select Convert so it'll switch it to GIMP's sRGB and bring this up here. Now something I want to do is I'm going to duplicate the file because I want to darken the image around her. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit Control, scroll out, and I'm going to use my free select tool. And I'm not going to worry about feathering edges because I'm going to select her and then create a mask. I'm just going to roughly go around her here and just kind of select her. I'm actually going to leave the bed mostly out of it and just mainly focus on the girl on the bed. Because when I create the mask, I'm, I will actually add the contrast that I want for the background and then... I will blur the mask and with on canvas editing, I'll be able to see the blur effect on the mask, how it's affecting the overall image. You know, this is just one way if you can't get a vignette in your program position the way you want. This is just one way to create kind of a fake vignette. So now that I have that selected, I want to go down here 
to add mask, I'm going to select the selection and I'm going to invert the mask so it actually does everything around the girl. I'm going to select add. Now I'm going to hit control shift A to get rid of the selection. Make sure the image is selected and not the mask. And I'm actually going to leave the image zoomed out like that. I'm going to go to colors, curves, and I'm just going to add my curve that I want. And as you see, it's uh, affecting the outer portion of the image. I'm just bringing it down to a level that I like. And I might bring the highlights up just about there. You know, you got kind of this velvet looking uh, furniture here. So I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to hit OK. But now I'm going to go back and select the mask physically there. And I'm going to go over here to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. You can mess with some of the other ones, but I tend to use Gaussian blur. And I'm actually just going to enter in 200. I'm going to hit tab, visually see how that changes the blur radius there. It looks good. I'll try 300. I like that a little bit more. It kind of the contrast kind of goes into her slightly. I'll hit OK. So now you got after, before, and after. I kind of like that look there. That's uh, obviously, if this was going to be something I was going to deliver to the client, I'd take a, quite a bit more time do some retouching, you know, do the mask more precisely. But there's that for a very quick edit using the open source tools for raw therapy and GIMP. If you like this video and you want to see some more detail on different things, please comment below. Feel free to put any input on what you'd like to see. Like, subscribe, comment below, share the video, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.